Hi guys, welcome back to UK Fly Fisher. As you could probably tell by the thumbnail and the fly I've got in advice today, I'm going to be telling you an apps. Now this is my variation, it's a five-legged version and it's been really, really consistent and it's catching me a lot of fish. Now over the years I've tried hundreds of different variations of apps. The bead ones are very popular. Now with the beads I find they're not very consistent. The olive and the amber ones are great. They'll catch pretty much all year round, but the other colours tend to fall off a lot. So I switched down to the eight-legged version without the beads. Um, it was okay, it was really good for stockies, but um, when things got hard it wasn't very consistent again and I didn't really get on with it too well. So I switched down to the four-legged version, which is what most competition anglers use. Absolutely fantastic pattern, especially the brandling colours, the olive colours. Um, really good uh, all year and very consistent flies. But I wanted to get a bit more consistency, a bit more movement, and I've come up with this little five-legged version. It's got everything you need in a fly, it's got a hot spot, loads of movement, and it's a really good pattern to have in your box. So, without any further delay, let's go and have a look at how I tie my apps. Now the hook will depend heavily on how you're going to fish this. We're going to be using a blob and buzzer, blob hook size 14. And that's because I'm going to be fishing this with a slow retrieve, or I'm tying it for someone that's going to be fishing it under a bung. A really good way to fish these flies is the long, slow 12 inch poles. Uh, basically with the slower poles you get a really good hook up rate and the hook hold on the circle hooks or the blob hooks is, is just far superior to a straight hook. Now the only time I will use a straight hook is if I'm going to be stripping this or roly polying it. You get a better hook up rate with the straight points so that's the time we're going to be using something like a full and mill competition heavyweight or a B175. So the tying silk, first of all we're going to put a little hot spot on this fly and we're going to be using a fluorescent fire orange in UTC. This is the 140. So I'm going to come in just in line with the point, catch in my tying silk and make my way back. Come in and snip away that waste piece. Then take two more turns where you've just snipped away before coming back up the hook shank to where you first tied in. And then we're going to go back down with touch and turns about three quarters of the way before coming back up again. Again with touch and turns. And then when we get back to the top, we're going to whip finish just three turns with the whip finishing tool. Come in and tie off. Snip away that waste piece. We don't need that anymore. We're going to switch over to the Olive UTC 140. And we're going to come in behind the eye. Tie all the way down the length of the hook. And then back up to just behind the eye. Again, snip away that waste piece. And for the flexi floss, I've tried loads out there. Bills is one of the best, um, but really at the moment, just in terms of pure strength, I'm going for the Olive Flexi from Blob and Buzzer. It's got plenty of movement and it's, it's a really strong material, which is one of the advantages of this fly that I'm tying now. We're not actually varnishing this fly. You can do. If I was going to varnish it, I'd make a load up with the hot spot, varnish the hot spot, and then carry on tying them afterwards. But with my version, we're not varnishing it, and the reason for that is we really want it to move slowly through the surface layers and just give it plenty more movement as, as we pull it back. So for the length of the legs, we're going to be going for three times the length of the hook. So we simply place the points at the um, eye of the hook and our fingers at the bend. So we go one, two, three. And then we're just going to hold it here, come up, pinch and loop, and then pull the flexi floss backwards as we tie it in down the shank. When we get to this point here, we see how that's sitting. Absolutely perfect. And then we're going to measure up the legs so that the same length front and back come in and snip away all the unwanted material. Now with these pieces, we're going to take one of them. This is going to be the rib of the fly and our third leg at the front. So I'm just going to tie it in on the side here. Make sure it sits on the side. And then just tie down the full length of the hook shank again with the olive tying silk and tying that leg in place. Lift your two legs at the front up and take a turn in front. Now you've got three legs at the back, one, two, three, and two legs at the front. But we're going to swap that around. We're going to take the rib, rib up with open turns. You should get four turns if you're pulling tight, like so. And then we pull the legs backwards, take this material round and over the front, pulling it backwards. And then we bring our tying silk this side of the flex floss, take it down in front 
behind the eye. Take two turns in front. And again, still holding this, bring that tiny silk up, bring it down in front of the flexi floss. So you've got all three tied in, pull them backwards, create a nice little olive head. This is gonna kick the legs up and give you plenty of movement. It's also gonna stop them tangling around the shank, like so, and then come in, put a tiny bit of varnish on our tiny silk, come in and pull those legs backwards as you whip finish. This is gonna make sure the head's nice and secure. Three turns should do it, pull it tight, come in and snip away that waist piece. So all that's left to do is come in with the three legs at the front and make sure that rib is cut to the same length as the other legs. Now, as you can see, that's the fly complete. The legs sit apart, it's great for movement. We've got one on the right, one in the middle, one on the left, and we've got the two legs split apart at the back. The way we're tying it gives it plenty more movement. It kicks the legs up so they're not tangling on that um, hook point or the bend in the hook. And it gives you a nice little hot spot there as well to draw the fresh in, track their attention, just catch their eye basically. Now there's hundreds of variations you can tie these up in. I've got the deadly brandling worm at the front there, absolutely killer pattern. Got the black there, that's been catching a lot of fish recently with the red holographic hot spot. The pink and pearl, that for me and my customers has been a great fly, absolutely ridiculous at catching fish, especially stocked fish. And then we've got the red here with a nice blue holographic tag that really makes that red pop. But there's hundreds of variations you could do. I just find that this variation gives me more control over the fly, adds plenty more movement, and it's certainly one you want to add to your fly box. Now there's many ways to fish this. As I mentioned earlier, you can fish it nymphing, under a bung, strip it, roly-poly. There's hundreds of ways to fish the apps. If you want to see exactly how we'd fish it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments below that the apps video is something you'd like to see, and I'll get that filmed for you. All that's left to do is say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.